Now we're going to do linear regression on the same data set with uh, Pennsylvania School Districts, but we will not use the plugin. Uh, sometimes it's useful to uh, be able to do this by hand. So we have three explanatory variables, percent free lunch, full-time teacher salary, and uh, student teacher ratio, and one output variable, the math scores for the district. I have to figure out how big of an area to highlight for the results of my linear regression analysis. Since I have three explanatory variables plus a constant intercept term, I'm going to highlight an area that's four columns wide and three and five rows down. Uh, that's just because Excel always needs five rows down to put some of its statistical output. And then I hit F2 and type equals linest. And now it wants to know which column or my y variables. Because I'm not using the add-in, I do not highlight the uh, label at the top of the column. I only do the actual numbers. So I click here, uh, shift and control, and press the down arrow. I highlight that. And then hit comma. Now I can enter my x's, my explanatory variables. Again, I do not use the labels there, just the numbers. So I click there, hold down shift cursor to the right twice, and then hold down shift and control, and cursor down, and press comma again. And now it wants to know, um, do I want a constant term? And yes, I do. I want it to add one from, uh, without me having to do it by hand, so I'll write the word true. And do I want extra statistical output? Sure, why not? So I'll type true again, and I type my close parenthesis. And now I press not just plain enter, but hold down shift and control and enter. And I get a bunch of numbers there. This one is the R squared value. You can look that up in the manual. It tells you, uh, or the help files, it tells you which entry is which here. Here are the coefficients, but they are in backwards order from the order I gave them here. So. The last one I gave is the student-teacher ratio, so that's this one. The middle one is the teacher salary. The first one is the percent free lunch. And then the last one is the intercept term that it added. Okay, so mm -hmm. the next step is to generate my residuals, or my predicteds, and then my residuals. To do that, it really helps to have these in the proper order. So I'm going to copy them here in backwards order, or backwards from the backwards order. So I just hit equals and then click on the cell whose value I want to copy. Equals that one. Equals that one and equals that one. Okay, now I'm going to make some room for my predicted and my residuals. So I click on this column, then right-click and choose Insert, and then right-click again and choose Insert again. I don't actually want those highlighted yellow, so I'll take away the fill there. So this column will be my predicted, and this column will be my residuals. Okay, how do I calculate predicteds? Predicteds are starting with the intercept term, and I'm going to be uh, pulling down the autofill box on this, so I need to lock that cell reference, and I'm just going to use the lazy way of using the dollar signs. I pressed F4 to automatically put in the dollar signs, but I don't think that works on max, for example. Then I'm going to add the sum product of the other coefficients, and again I need to press, uh, to put in the dollar signs there, so I press F4, that's the shortcut, comma, and the actual values for this school district, but I do not put in the dollar signs on that, because I do want that to change when I drag it down. And with the parentheses, I can just play, press uh, plain old enter, I don't have to do control shift enter, in fact I shouldn't do control shift enter. So first I'll check, is this predicted value reasonably equal to 1410 or roughly nearby? Yes, that's good enough. And then I can compute my residual just by doing 
actual minus predicted. And that looks like a reasonable value. And now I'll autofill these down just by double clicking on the fill handle. Ready? Double click. Okay. And now it's a good idea to graph predicted versus residual. So I'll go hold down shift, go one to the right, now shift control down, and insert the scatter plot. Uh, because the data is in a random order here, we don't want to do connecting lines, so we're going to do just dots with no connecting lines. Um, so on the x-axis here are the predicted values, on the y-axis are the residuals. I don't see any pattern left like a frown or a smile or a sine wave, so I think we've captured the essence of the data. And we're done.